How many of those who profess to be Christians are truly reborn Christians? Do you have a true relationship with God? Do you worship Him in spirit and in truth? Does He know you? So you can gain all the wealth, fame, gain a lot of things in this world, but when you die, it means nothing. The righteous punishment for sin is death. Hey guys, for those of you who've seen The Matrix, you know, a world within a world, a lot of people watch that movie and do not realize that we too live in a type of matrix because we live in a physical world, but we don't see the spiritual world that's influencing the physical, just like we cannot see wind that moves leaves. But it exists and you will die someday and then you will go to eternal darkness or to eternal life. And a lot of you watching this video right now are on the way to hell. It is just a matter of time. If you die in your sleep tonight, you're going to hell. If you don't, stop right now. And I'm saying this to you with a lot of love because I don't want you to go to hell for all eternity. Jesus said in Matthew 25 verse 41, then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Some of you might say, well, Daniel, I don't believe in hell, so I'm not going to go there. Well, you need to understand that your perception of the truth doesn't change reality itself. It doesn't make things true just because you believe that. Your father or mother or someone in your life, if they died, you can believe with all the power that you have that they did not die, but the fact remains that they die. If you drop something, you can believe it's going to fly into the air, right? But there is something such as gravity. So your perception of gravity doesn't change gravity itself. Hell exists. And you can hear that from a lot of people who had near-death experiences who, or who were dead for a few, few minutes, actually. Bill Weiss is a really good example. If you haven't watched this video, please watch it here on YouTube. There are over 300,000 people who die every single day. And many of them are surprised when they open up their eyes in hell and it dawns on them that they will be there for all eternity because they chose the darkness over the light when they were here on earth. It dawns on them that it is too late. They can't go back. No second chances. They had millions of chances while they were on earth, but they pushed the truth away because they wanted to follow their own sinful desires. They wanted to live for sin, for the world with all its sinful pleasures. Jesus says in Luke 13 verse 28, in that place, he's talking about hell, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do not be deceived. Hell is real and it is a terrible, terrible place where people will suffer for all eternity. The worm does not die. There's no water. God is not there. And we know everything that is good in this world comes from God. It will be a place of utter darkness because God is not there and God is light. And let me tell you, there will be many people in hell who thought they were Christians but they were not. These are people who might have grown up in a Christian home, but they have never accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Preachers who preached the gospel, but who were never spiritually reborn. People who went to church often, practicing dead religion, but not worshiping God in spirit and truth. Listen to this shocking, warning by Jesus himself. Matthew 7 verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, 
but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Many people say, I know God. We have our own relationship. Well, does he know you? That's two very different things. Just believing that God exists doesn't mean anything because the demons also believe that. <laughs> They're not going to heaven. But now truly accepting him, trusting him for your salvation, following him as your Lord and Savior changes everything because he makes you a new creation. Let me tell you, there are many people out there who say with their mouths that they are Christians, but they are not new creations. According to worldpopulationreview.com, there are around 2.38 billion Christians in the world. I wonder how many of those who profess to be Christians are truly reborn Christians. God says in Revelation 3 verse 16, So, because you are lukewarm, and neither hot nor cold, I will, not maybe, not probably, I will spit you out of my mouth. Now you might say, Daniel, you're very harsh today. No, I'm just very serious because this is serious because your soul depends on making the right choice. And you only have this amount of time. This world passes in an instant. Your life <laughs> means nothing. The one day you're here, the next you are gone. You're not taking anything with you. So you can gain all the wealth, fame. You can gain a lot of things in this world. But when you die, it means nothing. If you don't have the one thing that actually matters. A lot of men say that they are Christians, but their works, their deeds does not show it at all. And God says, you will know them by their fruits. How is it that some Christian men scream louder for their favorite sports team than for God in Sunday worship? Why is it that they don't study the Bible, writing it on their hearts and living it? Why don't they teach it to their children? Why don't they live it? Do you have a true relationship with God in spirit and in truth where you communicate with Him daily through the Spirit? Or do you look just like the rest of sinful mankind, practicing dead man-made religion and on the way to the flames of hell? John 4 verse 24 says, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Do you? Do you worship him in spirit and in truth? Truth means you have to come to the truth of yourself, your relationship with God, who you are, your sinful nature, right? You accept him as Lord and Savior and then you worship him in spirit because you received His Spirit. You see, people who have not been spiritually reborn, they cannot worship God because they only have their normal body with their soul. They have not received a new spiritual nature. We can only understand the things of God once we receive His Spirit and that it happens on the day you accept Him as Lord and Savior. You know, everyone knows by now, John 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So most people know that, but they do not understand what true belief in Christ is. Because as I said earlier, belief in Christ is not just that, oh, I believe he exists. <laughs> because demons also believe in God and they shudder. They are not saved. True belief in Jesus Christ is something different. It is trusting Him fully for your salvation, understanding what He did on the cross, why He had to die for your sins, 
why you cannot save yourself through good works, why you can only rely on Him. And when you do that, being sincere, repenting of your sins, asking Him to come into your life, He, <laughs> it's a miracle because He works regeneration within you. It is He that can change you. You cannot change yourself. So everyone knows this verse, John 3 verse 16, right? But they don't know the verses that come before this to explain the spiritual birth. For example, verse 3 in the Amplified Bible says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless a person is born again, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, sanctified, he cannot ever see and experience the kingdom of God. If you have not accepted Christ as your personal savior and received his spirit and experienced regeneration, then you're on the way to hell. That is what Jesus says. But the good news is that we don't have to go to hell because salvation is a gift. Verse 5, Jesus answered, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot ever enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. The physical is merely physical. And that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. So it is important to understand that you cannot save yourself through good works. That is what every other religion teaches people, that you can save yourself through good works. It is impossible because before God, who is truly holy and righteous, even your best deeds are like filthy rags to Him. And if you say you're a Christian, but you try to worship God in the flesh, you're just practicing dead man-made religion. It means absolutely nothing. You can pray until you're blue. It won't do anything. You need the Spirit. You need salvation, true salvation, where you accept Jesus Christ. Then you receive the Spirit and it is a gift. And then you can worship God in spirit and truth. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. So in a nutshell, this is how it works. You cannot be spiritually dead and try to be religious in the flesh. No, first God changes you on the inside. You became a new creation, spiritually alive, and then from the inside, good deeds will naturally flow. Not because, oh, I tried to and I have to now. No, because now I can. <laughs> I can live and act through the Spirit and I don't obey God because I, oh, I have to. I do it because I want to now. I love Him. I understand Him with everything that is in me. You know, sometimes people make salvation too complicated. How are you saved? Romans 10 verse 9 says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe, true belief, true faith, in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So true belief is where you understand how sinful you are, how holy God is, that you repent of your sins and you believe that he really died for your sins on the cross. You accept his sacrifice and you confess it with your mouth for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. So if you do this, then God justifies you and you are saved. You see, if God is truly righteous, He needs to punish you because of your unrighteousness. But now Jesus comes in and says, I will take His punishment. I didn't do anything wrong, but God the Father, all the punishment you wanted to give this person I will take it. And the righteous punishment for sin is death. That's why Jesus died on the cross. So if you accept it, you become a reborn Christian and receive God's Spirit in you. Ephesians 1 verse 13 says, In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in Him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the guarantee 
of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of His glory. Now I want to ask you, and you need to answer this truthfully. If you die today, where are you going? Are you a lukewarm Christian? Are you spiritually lazy? Romans 12 verse 11 says, Do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. And remember, God says in Matthew 15 verse 8, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Some of you might be realizing that you're not really worshiping God the way you should. You're not taking your faith seriously. You're using God like a, a jacket or a piece of jewelry. You just put Him on whenever you feel like it. And you know why you do that? It is because this world and the self-life, you, are more important to you than God. You love the world more than you love God. In 1 John 2 verse 15 says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I want to plead with you today to take your relationship with God seriously. Have some conviction and start to follow Jesus Christ with everything that is in you. Jesus said in Matthew 22 verse 37, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. When God gives you new spiritual life, it changes everything. That is when you start to live for the very first time. He renews your mind. You start to grow in the Word. He changes you. It changes your whole life, your relationships with people around you. It is amazing when you truly start to follow God. <laughs> and then you wonder, why haven't you done this when you were younger? And you know, one of the big things that changed for a lot of people who thought that they were Christians, when you now pray, you understand, oof, my prayer is even changing because the way I look to God, my relationship with Him now is different. I don't just pray to Him and worship Him because of what He can do for me and what I want all the time. That's the flesh. I start to pray now just to worship God. I praise Him because I truly love Him. Galatians 4 verse 6 says, And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And 1 John 4 verse 16 says, So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. And God abides in Him. If you do not have His love in you, then you are not His child. That means you are not spiritually reborn. You cannot understand Him from just your soul level. It is impossible because you need His Spirit <laughs> to tell you who He is, to be able to worship Him in spirit and truth. Romans 8 verse 6, For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. And 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14 says, The natural person, that is the normal person who just have their body and their soul, they're not spiritually alive. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Wow, this is me. This is what my life was like. I mean, I grew up in a Christian home. My dad was even a preacher who lived the way he preached. I had a very good example because he was a great preacher. And I could see God in his life and how it changed people. I also saw the darkness, how he helped and his team as well, people who were demon-possessed. 
and I saw strange supernatural things. So I knew God was real. But still, I wanted to live for the world. Until much later, when my second brother died, and I gave my life truly for the first time to God. I became a reborn Christian. And I received God's Spirit. And only then, a lot of the things I heard as a young boy in the church of my father and other Christians speak, I heard and understand a little. But only then, those seeds started to bloom. I started to understand things for the first time. Now, when we go back to Romans 8, verse 9 says, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Wow! Amen! You know, if God is speaking to you today, go to Him. Do not wait until tomorrow because you can even die in your sleep. Tomorrow might be too late. Go to your bedroom, close the door, kneel next to your bed and accept Him. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me for everything that I have done. And come, come and live inside of me. Give me your spirit. Make me a new creation. Work regeneration in me. Change me to see you, to start to understand the things of the spirit. I accept what you did for me on the cross. Thank you for dying for my sins, even though you did not have to do that. I accept you now as my Lord and Savior. Please give me eternal life. Remember Acts 4 verse 12 says, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And Titus 3 verse 5 says, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration, and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you want to know how to grow spiritually stronger, because if you do come to Christ, you are a spiritual baby and you need to grow spiritually. Watch here this video about the spiritual man. I'll see you there. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And never forget, life is short. So please do not waste yours. Bye.